Hello guys and welcome to this boring tutorial where I will talk about motion referencing and envelope referencing which can in some cases save a lot of time. It, it really depends on what type of work you're doing. If you're doing lots of uh, render passes uh, then this thing will probably uh, give you some ideas on how you can streamline your workflow uh, a little bit better. The reason why I wanted to do this tutorial is because Lightwave Sadly, Lightwave lacks a proper referencing system. If you use other tools like Maya, for example, you have a proper referencing system where, um, I mean, you can reference everything. Lightwave do reference textures and objects and shaders. Uh, and if you're using MDDs, that will reference as well. But this is a typical setup. You have like, you have on, on the left side here you have the animation part of things and on the right side you have the object part of things uh, this is very simplified of course of course if, if you are animating a object as a character for example it might need a rig this that's why uh, these blue ones are kind of blue <laughs> because they're they they do belong in in the same category it's just that if something needs to be animated then you have to animate it and then you output an MDD and uh, you assemble pretty much everything into an assembly scene and then you break out your render scene file. Now I have put lighting here as a separate uh, pipeline step uh, because um, the assembly scene might not be the best place always to actually do the lighting in uh, because there are other, other people that needs to work with this assembly scene and, and just push things into it uh, or put things into it and assigning the MDDs and making sure that all the correct objects are there. So lighting could be like a branch off of the assembly scene where someone else then just focus on lighting and when he's done with that you import the lighting into the assembly scene and you start to break out the, the different render scenes or render passes using Janus or doing it manually. And the thing here that I would, the next slide here is is essentially how Lightwave works nowadays with regards to referencing. So essentially uh, if the object is updated, let's say you tweak the well, I would say here, if you tweak the object's uh, properties, for example, it needs to go back into the into the character rig or something, and then he the, the animator will animate and then output an MDD, and that MDD will ripple into all the render scene files that you have done. Um, but if you would change something else on the object, I don't know what that would be, but um, it would probably be more like a shade, for example. If you if you if you change the ch the shading of an object, you don't need to bring it into the assembly scene in order to render the result on all those render scene files. Right now, this it's just one render scene file here. But imagine that you have twenty different render passes for f that originally came from this assembly scene. You wouldn't really want to open that assembly scene uh, in order to update things if it ripples through, right? So. If you update the textures, you don't have to open the assembly scene. It, you, you can just go directly from saving the texture to the render farm controller and re-init the, 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 the render scene file. Uh, the same thing, well, objects is kind of great. It, it shouldn't have that line directly here because depending on what type of object it is, it might have to go through the rigging process or some animation process. But let's say if it's a static object, like a building or something that doesn't really have any type of, of rig, then you can of course change whatever you want and that will ripple into the render scene files. It doesn't have to go through the assembly scene in order to be able to be re-rendered. Um, so that's kind of where Lightweb is today. So if you, for example, if I would change the camera, I would have to open the assembly scene, I would have to import that new camera and I have to like output all these render scene files again uh, either manually or through Janus uh, or well if you if you have two or three render scene files then maybe you just Im open those up and import the camera in those and save them but if you have 20 or in some cases I have had over 70 
render scene files from one single assembly scene, I wouldn't want to do that manually. I, w I would have to. I would. What I would have done th in that case, I would load the assembly scene file, import the camera, use Janus to output all the render scene files, and renit them on the render farm. But there is one thing that you can do with Lightweight these days that that kind of streamlines this a little bit better, uh, especially if you're if you're talking about cameras. But this can ripple into lights, for example, or or anything that has can have an envelope and a motion file. You know, you can actually reference that. Um, so the next slide here is, of course, that extra step. So MDDs and objects and and textures that's fine. You know, Lightweight reference that perfectly fine, nothing to worry about. Uh, it's usually the this, this things that you do in scene files that, that can't really be referenced. Uh, so in this case what we have is, um, let's say you change the camera, you output a motion file and an envelope file for whatever you have done, like f-stop or focal length or zoom factor or whatever you have used uh, on the camera you output all those as separate envelope files and the first time you set up the assembly scene file you import that camera in here but what you do here uh, just like you have done with the characters here you have applied the mdds here in the assembly scene file what you do with the camera in this case is to apply uh, this this tool that allows you to reference a motion file and the envelope files from from hard drive, which means that if the camera, if, if you later down down the road you have rendered everything and the, the the director comes back and says, hey, I want to uh, change the camera. I mean that's that's something that kind of happens a lot for us at least. So what we do then, of course, is yeah, okay, we we open the animation scene file where we have the camera, we update the camera. We output the motion file and envelope file, and that ripples directly into these render scene files here. So we don't have to go back and and uh, like into the assembly scene file import or opening all these render scene files and importing the new camera. We just publish these files, and they ripple into the render scene files. So, of course, this is the camera. What you could do is essentially doing the same thing with lighting. Uh, it's just that. Right now, since I'm not a coder or scripter, I, I can't really automate this in any good way. I, I imagine if someone could automate this using um, applying the DP DP uh, uh, what is it called DP kit lag time lag node uh, with uh, like a name matching or whatever, uh, this could be extended to a lot more than just. Uh, in this case, just a camera. Uh, it de it depends on how much manual labor you want to put into when you assemble the scene file, I guess. Uh, but I, I think there's a there's a lot of room for improvements here, maybe from third party to kind of think about how how we would do this and how it could be could be be streamlined. Like let's say you have a publish motion files envelopes button in in Lightwave. And that goes through all the selected objects or cameras and outputs envelopes and motion files um, for all selected um, items in the corresponding subfolders in the corresponding envelope envelope subfolder and uh, motion files subfolder. Maybe that's something that can be done. I don't know. It's really up to someone smarter than me to to see if it's possible to automate that. But that essentially could mean that if you update lighting, uh, you could have like a the motion motion envelope step here that ripples also into the render scene file, so it doesn't have to be updated in the assembly scene file and then broken out again. But maybe that's possible. Uh, I don't know. But I just wanted to briefly also show this, how that works uh, with Lightwave. So uh, just stick around and then let's take a look at that. Okay, so in the scenes folder I have three things here. I have the animation scene files, 
where I've split it up so that I have one animation scene file where I do the camera and that's the only place where I'm allowed to change the camera. And then I have of course the Piranha Alien which uh, I guess Lino Grande was the animator for. And uh, then of course I have the the assembly folder which is where I assemble everything like the environment, the lighting, the characters and I also apply, this is the scene where I apply all these um, motion files and uh, envelope files so that they are referenced and this will become the main scene file from where I would create the different render passes either manually or using something like uh, Janus to break things out. And then I have, of course, the render scene files folder where all the passes that I want is placed. And also these are the ones that goes onto the render farm, of course. So essentially, if we start looking uh, at the Piranha assembly here, um, I have the camera, I have the character MDDs, I also have these uh, nulls which when we start with these these are the three different piranhas here in motions I have these three piranha motion files and uh, I map those to uh, these nulls here so if I bring up motion options for this uh, you can see that I have something called nodal motion applied if I double click on that I have uh, Dennis Pontonier's DP kit and in there there is a node called time lag and what that allows you to do is to load motion files so uh, essentially every time I would reload the scene file it would pick uh, it would load the motion from this this particular file here so in the animation file where I animate the camera I might reposition these guys uh, so uh, and if I do that I just publish the the motion file and it will just ripple through the whole pipeline uh, so you don't have to open up the assembly file uh, assembly scene file and break things out again it, it will just be out of magic which I like so this is essentially what I do for for these three and of course these have already I mean for the deformation of this these guys they, they have uh, the the MDD displacement applied to them Okay, and uh, yeah, well, for the camera, I do have the, the same thing there. I have the nodal motion that reference that motion file for the camera. And for the envelopes, as you can see here, this, there is an envelope here that you can map as well. So for the envelopes, if I bring up the graph editor, I have an envelope for the camera focal distance, one for f-stop and one for zoom factor. And as you can see, they are affected here. Uh, so on modifiers, there is something called um, uh, channel filter. Uh, let's see. Node channel filter. So it's a node, e node editor for uh, a single channel here. So if I double click there, oops. You can see that I have mapped the zoom factor here, that specific envelope that I have published, and I take that value into into the the, the scalar input here, uh, and I get that result. Okay, so here to the left I have the Piranha Alien Walk Assembly, the, the main assembly scene file, and here I have the camera animation scene file, and right now they are, are synced, they have the same camera and everything's nice and then all of a sudden the director comes in and says hey I want to change this camera completely so I have prepared this already so I have a, a second camera here that is very different as you can see so if I have this one playing yeah completely different camera so what, what my task now when this camera has been approved uh, for the second time <laughs> um, I need to publish the, the motion files and the envelope files for, for what I did with that camera. And I've already done that, but I just need to replace the, the, the delivery scene file at this point. 
So let's start with saving out the motion file for the camera. So save motions, save motion file. And I want to overwrite the delivery. I've already done the version already. So I just overwrite the delivery file there. Okay. And then there is the, let's see, the, the zoom factor is different. So let's save that and uh, cameras zoom factor I will write the delivery file okay what more have changed well we have the the focal distance and f-stop so I will bring up those up here select that one so this is focal distance save focal distance will write the delivery file and then we had the f-stop as well so save cameras f-stop okay so everything is saved it's just that this one has not been updated yet that's because uh, the time lag node it works like this it will reload these motion files when you reload the scene or if you re-init uh, the scene on the render farm or whatever so uh, let's just have this one playing and then I will just uh, reload this scene and now we can see that the camera has been updated for this assembly scene file and if we pick a frame let's see here maybe so frame 76 and let's just turn on uh, depth of field and motion blur for both these so we can see that they are matching perfectly nice there and obviously if I would load up uh, one of the render scenes now it, it would be updated with this new camera so I don't have to go in and, and update these render scenes it just ripples through so yeah that's essentially what i wanted to show you guys with this video tutorial hopefully you will find this useful and hopefully you can implement it in your own way of working and uh, if you have any questions or anything just ask and i will try to answer them so there you have it cheers and thanks for watching